Green light! Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This video is probably one of the most exciting videos on my channel. I am going to break down my experience on Squid Game The Challenge! If you don't know by now, I was a contestant on Netflix's reality show of Squid Game, and this was filmed back in January of 2023. We were in London, and it is now out, and I can share with the world. It is the biggest secret I have kept in my life, besides the fact that I was gay. Spoiler alert, I didn't get much screen time, and so this is Squid Game The Challenge, Kevin's version. <laughs> So back all the way to summer of 2022, this was a time where I was really burnt out with creating content because I wasn't sure where I was going. Um, and so I saw this ad on YouTube and I saw an opportunity to audition and send in a tape and I said, why not? I have nothing to lose. And next thing you know, I was in the whole process of getting casted and I was confirmed by the end of December of 2022. They flew me out to London in 2023 of January and the rest is history. So of course, I'm only sharing you things that I'm allowed to share, also things from my perspective and my experience since none of it was shown. But my main reason in wanting to be on Squid Game The Challenge was because I, growing up, have never seen anybody like myself represented on screen before. Um, as a queer person of color, I'm non-binary, I identify as trans, I'm Vietnamese American, I'm gay. So my hope was that I could be that role model for the younger generation or whoever could identify with my story and relate and feel empowered that, you know what, if Kevin can do that, I can do anything. Of course, another reason was the $4.56 million prize, okay? I wanted to win that for my dad and my sister because my mom passed away from ovarian cancer back in 2018, and so my dad had just been raising my sister and her college education on his own, and so this was my way of paying them back because they have been nothing but supportive and so loving of me. <laughs> So this is my first time ever in Europe. I'm in London. Technically, this was my solo trip before my solo trip era began. So I'd like to thank Squid Game for really being the prequel to my solo travel era. I arrived at my hotel in London and then we had to do some production things. Um, and then next thing you know, we are ready to film. To get your green tracksuit, you had to trade in your phone. And so I got my green tracksuit and I was number 187, which somebody told me that 187 is a code for murder in like California or something. And I was like, period, I'm about to murder this competition. <laughs> So Red Light, Green Light was filmed at an airplane hangar, and so that was the only way to fit 456 real contestants. Um, mind you, it was freezing because it's an airplane hangar, there's no heating, there's no insulation, and it's in the middle of January in London. At the time, I had no idea what we were doing. I wasn't sure if we were going to replicate this show exactly with the same games, or we were gonna do new games. Like, I remember practicing physically and mentally for like, Simon Says, or like, Freeze Tag, and stuff like that. But I walk into the set, and lo and behold, the 10 foot doll was there, bitch! Fuck that doll! It was almost as big as a soccer field, I would say. You saw the two pink guards there, and oh my goodness, they did such a great job with the set because it was so exact like the show. Everybody's freaking out, we're all shivering, we're discussing strategies, people are like, I'm gonna walk slow, people are like, I'm gonna run fast, and I'm over here like, Girl, I just don't want to be in the front because I don't want to get shot at, okay? But at the same time, I didn't want to be in the back back because I didn't want to like jump over all like the dead bodies, you know? <laughs> So my strategy was to be kind of in the middle, that way there was more space to like navigate and also kind of be maybe like three or four people back from the front. And so that way I was kind of near the front but not exactly in the front. At this time, I made so many new friends. I actually got recognized by someone. Um, her name was Dominique and Raquel, they're twin sisters. So hey girl. I also had time to build an alliance with some guys nearby. I called them my Squid Game boyfriends. They were all European girl. I had Manu, who is like an Italian cutie. There was Tayo, who I believe is half Japanese, half Korean, and lives in Germany, and he is a rapper. There was Neta, who is a magician, icon. There was Saeed, he was a Moroccan male model. I also have my number neighbors, which are also my Squid Game boyfriends, 186, who is Anur, and 188, who is Sam. And lastly, there was Beetle, who was my ginger Prince Harry. Before you know it, we're all lined up. They explained to us the rules, five minutes on the clock, which somebody lied to me several times because 
um, we did not play that game for five minutes. I'll just say that. <laughs> the doll turns around and she goes, Boku wow, suck my pussy. <laughs> Bitch, we start running, the floodgates are open, and before you know it, we had to be frozen. And I mean frozen. Disney. It was the most painful thing I've actually, I lied, I had a toothache the other week and I had a root canal, that was the most painful thing. But red light, green light was up there, okay? So, after realizing what an ordeal red light, green light was going to be, I essentially ran with my hands in my pockets because I didn't want to be frozen with my arms like midair, like try holding that pose for a long period of time. And so that way when I was stopped, I could like have my hands rest in something. Also, it was cold and so I just put my hands in my pockets and it allowed me to just rest my arms. And I leaned on one hip and then every other round I would alternate and lean on the other hip. So that was my strategy. The game's going, bitch, I'm running for my dear life. Technically the doll sings for like seven seconds but you kind of want to stop before that. So you're running for like maybe five seconds tops so that's why it took forever to play this game at one point I was in so much pain my leg was like shivering and shaking and I was like Kevin stop to move is to die you did not get this far to not get any interviews like bitch people are getting eliminated left and right and I'm just gagged I was like oh my god I do not want to Finally, after four hours for me, I finished and survived red light green light Woo! The longest I heard it took someone to play this game was like eight hours, and so, oop, sorry, couldn't be me. Now we are in the dorms, we walk in, and we see the set that's designed exactly like it is in the show. Girl, it was large and in charge, the bunk beds were stacked on top of one another, I was like, ooh, who wants to be on the top of my bunk? This was a time for us to really explore the set, build connections, network, form alliances, all that good stuff. There was so much talking that by the next day people were losing their voices and having sore throats. But at this point, I already had some of my people and so Dominique was one of them, the twin sister. Unfortunately, Raquel didn't make it, so RIP to her. At this point, a villain had emerged and he was like bullying people and I was like, really? Like that's the villain of our show? A bully? Like. You can go outside in the real world and get that. Like, I want someone conniving and evil and malicious and backstabbing. You know what I'm saying? Like, ugh, boring. At this point, I had a conversation with another guy, and this guy was actually the first person I talked to from this whole experience. I pulled him to his side like the bachelor. I said, can I steal you for a second? Okay, see, I was playing it up for the cameras, baby. And I asked him, I was like, what brings you here? Like, why did you want to sign up for the show? And he told me his reasoning and I told him mine, which is, you know, because my mom passed away and wanted to win for my family and, you know, hopefully be a good representation. And he was like, oh my God, thank you so much for being vulnerable and so open. I wasn't expecting that. Um, well, because you told me that, I'm gonna tell you a secret. So he told me his secret and I was like, oh, perfect. And I thought we were having such a moment that I asked, I was like, hey, like, if we get to Marbles, I would love to be partnered up with you. And he's like, why? He said, don't you want to just be partnered separately and then that way we can win together? And I was like, well, like, if I were to be sent home by anybody from Marbles, I'd want it to be the first person I ever met from this entire experience. And so he said, okay, purr. I thought that was such a cute moment. I said, okay, let me add that into my back pocket of my storyline. And of course, as you all know, I got really close with my Squid Game boyfriends. And so before you know it, I said, I have a storyline to pitch. I said, hello, my name is Kevin. I'm non-binary. I'm a content creator and I'm here to inspire people. Plot point number one is that my friends are getting bullied by the villain and that is not okay. How sickening would it be for the queer your POC to squash the bully because bitch, I don't stand for that and I've been through it before. So how sickening would that have been? Plot point number two, the first person I ever talked to on this whole experience, we agreed to be partners in marbles. He told me a secret that he was keeping from everyone and he wasn't sure if he was gonna tell. And bitch, wouldn't that be such a cute moment for when we get some marbles? And plot point number three, I have an alliance with a bunch of straight guys and as you know, a queer person, it's like not very common for me to have straight guy friends, especially that many, um, and they were all European. And so I was like, how cute and fun would that be if we got to tug of war? Girl, after my pitch, they pulled me for an interview and they asked me questions about the plot points that I was giving them. They asked me about red light, green light, and I was like, fuck that doll. She was not dolling, like, uh-uh. I was just honestly being myself and 
the comedic relief that I think we all needed. So at this point, they finally update like the players that got eliminated from Red Light Green Light and we're all gagged. We're like, oh shit, it's not 300, it's not 200, it's 190, is it seven? 190 something. And we're all like, woo bitch, we made it that far. Like more than half the cast gone. Like I did that. <laughs> So day two was a test where there was an elimination and at the time we didn't know who voted player 200 out and so we were like, oh, who could have done that? And so I added to the plot and I was talking to my friends. I was like, girl, I think you should go talk to this person. That person looks suspicious. Like we was doing some Nancy Drew shit, okay? We were like feeding the plot. I will say by the second day in the dorms, there was not much to do because at that point you kind of talk to everyone you wanted to talk to because you don't want to talk to everybody. You kind of want to stay low key. And so people were like playing games and all that stuff. The food girl, oh my God, they fed us the most bland shit I have ever had in my life. It was like no sugar, no salt. Every morning it was just plain oatmeal made out of water. Mm. I forgot to mention, every single time I would pick up food from the pink guards, I would say, thank you guard daddy. And I would say that every single time because I don't know, I'm in a silly goofy mood and the pink guards make me feel some type of way because they kind of remind me of Taeyang. I remember eating with my friends and I was just gaslighting myself. I was like, mmm, the flavors, it's so real. Like, I'm not a picky eater, so I'll eat anything, but <laughs> it was so funny. During my time in the dorms, I had connected with all my Squid Game boyfriends. I had a conversation with Beetle about how I started YouTube and how I was bullied in high school and I made a video about it. Um, and then I really connected with Manu. He shared me his story about his grandfather. I shared about my mom and we really just connected and we talked about like tattoos and like what the meaning would be if we got one dedicated to the people that we loved. And it was just so heartwarming. And I will say I'm so grateful to have such a good support system of like these straight guys because it was really intimidating being in such a large group of people not knowing what people's agendas were, especially like with cameras rolling. And so I really felt safe and at home with my European Squid Game boyfriends. I also talked to Lorenzo in the dorms who had screen time and he's so funny. He asked me, he was like, Kevin, who do you think the cutest guy here is? And I was like, um, I think you're one of them. I just straight up said it to his face. The announcement comes on and it says, players, we're ready for the next game. And I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> They escort us into the staircase room, which was so cool to see. Um, and <laughs> I remember they were like, keep it clean, no gaps. And I like ran up the stairs because at one point there was a gap and I tripped and I fell. Thank God I didn't show that, that would have been embarrassing. <laughs> So the staircase room led into the white room where you got to pick a line and that's how you got to play Dalgona. So I decided to go in line three because Taylor Swift is my queen and her favorite number is 13, so there's a three on that. And also my birthday's May 6th and half of six is three, so I don't know, something about me just said line three. So at this time, most of my Squid Game boyfriends wanted to stick together. They're like, we should stay in the same line so we can support each other and help each other. And then two of them split off, uh, Anur and Sam. They said, no, it's okay, we're gonna go over here. So the rest of them got into line four and I was the sole one that was in line three and so um, we basically were split up. So line one was Anur and Sam, line two was Lorenzo, line three was me and I actually became friends with 198 Husnain. And line four were the rest of my Squid Game boyfriends and I'm just like, you know, it's cute that y'all want to stick together but it's also like, who's to say we don't fuck up our cookie even though we get the same shape? Anyway, so all the line leaders go in and they're the ones that decide the shape for us. You can see the show and how it went down. We were all gagged as well as someone else. And it had been determined that line one was circle, line two was triangle, line three, my line was star. And line four with the rest of my Squid Game boyfriends was umbrella. I said, girl, so much for sticking together. I was so heartbroken. I mean, granted the game hasn't begun. Maybe they'll pass, but Whew, it's kind of scary, girl. So each shape goes into play individually, and it was like hours until it was my turn. So by the time I went in to do my shape, I was so hungry, I was like shaking. They never showed me playing Dalgona, which is unfortunate, but I can also see why, because it was so quiet, and like the mood was very serious, and I... <laughs> I did not take it seriously at all. I literally like spat in the cookie and I was like rubbing it all in. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get you nice and wet, baby. Ooh, and I got my needle. I started scratching that bitch away. I said, ooh, this is easy, girl. You could give me snowflake and I could eat that shit up. I look at the timer, I'm like, ooh, I got five. 
five minutes left, period. And so I think I was just way too goofy, too silly for the tone that they were going for. But I don't know. I thought they wanted some comedic relief, okay? Everybody was so quiet, so I gave them content to work with. I mean, it's not my fault that it was easy for me and I wasn't stressed out and dramatic about it. So maybe I should have been a little stressed and dramatic. Maybe they would have aired that. Anyway, that was my strategy. I just wanted it to soak into the cracks like a dam, okay? Because at the end of the day, it's sugar, like it's glucose in saliva. Chemistry. So I carved it out, but the thing is you have to take it out to show the guard. And I was so scared of breaking it. I was like, oh God. So I took the needle and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got it out and they said, play out 187 pass. I said, I know that's right. I actually held onto that Dalgona star the whole way back to the dorm because I wanted to show my friends who passed the other shapes and like have some tangible evidence in hopes that it like made the shot. Cause like, wouldn't that be cute? I'd be like, look, I got it. Nobody else had it. So I got to show it to my friend. I was like, I did it. I wanted to share this moment with you. He's like, you want to share that with me? Ew. I was like, no girl, this moment. So I ate that thing and I said, mm -mm -mm. bon appetite. So now we are waiting for Umbrella. So the first person to come back into the dorms after completing Umbrella was none other than my Moroccan male model boyfriend, Saeed. Sam had passed, Anur had passed, Lorenzo had passed, and we were all like, oh my God, yay! And we're like cheering him on, Saeed, you did it. They like put him on his shoulders. They put him back down and I ask, where's everybody else? He goes, they didn't make it. Girl, I kid you not, I bawled my eyes out then and there. I was like, no, what the heck? And everybody was like, give it all. And I like cried in his muscular arms. I was like, ah. It's so weird too, because at this point it was like four days in and I was like crying over people I just met. But it's so interesting because when you're put in this environment with like no windows, no phones, no clocks, like you really get to know people and it almost feels like they have been Especially because I lost four of them. Oh my gosh, like that's a lot. And I was like banking on them to be my tug of war team, but whoo, I was emotionally drained for the rest of that day. So the next day was in the dorms. It was the phone call day with Hussein. And I remember eating and him talking to me and he's a TikToker and so we really bonded over social media. I remember him turning over to me as I'm eating my lunch and he goes, what if today's the day I go home? And I'm like, <laughs> Beats me, I don't know. And before you know it, the phone drama begins, the burgers and fries, which by the way, I missed that whole thing. Nothing was happening for hours, and so the time that I went to the bathroom because nothing was going on, I missed the whole french fries and burgers debacle. By the end of the day, the phone rings again, <laughs> he picks it back up, as you see in the show, and oh my god, um, he gets eliminated. <laughs> That elimination was not meant for anybody else but him. It was so funny because I cannot imagine anybody else getting sent home by the phone that way than him. I love him, but like that was meant for him. <laughs> At this point in the game, I was just like so emotionally drained because I had lost a lot of my friends and at this point other people were having their stories progress and so I just felt kind of defeated. But I powered through and we moved on to the next day which is Battleship. So before we knew it was Battleship, everybody thought it was gonna be tug of war. I remember even like putting my hair up and a half up, half down just to like spice things up a bit, okay? Look, I was a cheerleader in high school. I got strong forearms, okay? I'm stronger than I look and so I was ready for it. We go into the white room to pick lines again and it was so hectic and chaotic. I feel like it didn't do it justice of how messy it was in there. And so I, again, was emotionally just checked out. So I was like, fuck this shit. I just got in a line. And I will say, I don't really think it even mattered what line you got because at the end of the day it was a game of chance and luck so eventually it was my team's turn to play battleship which they totally glossed over the whole process of how we picked a captain and how we played the game and everything bless my captain and lieutenant I know they tried their best but oh my goodness this game like there was nothing you could do because if you were in a boat you were basically a sitting duck so as we're playing this game eventually we're missing left and right and so are the other team they finally hit one of our boats and it was none other than Anur, who was the person in front of me. I said, oh lordy, we're the first boat to, like we're, we're a goner. I'm like, it's over for us. My story's over. Then they hit the girl in front of him. And then finally, they hit me. 
There was nothing I could do. I was like, do we not have fucking lifeboats, like a life vest? I, can I swim away? Can I phone a friend? Like, what the fuck is this? So unfortunately, my death scene was death by drowning or bombing. Initially, Anor and I wanted to be in the same boat together because he's 186 and I'm 187 and he's my Squid Game boyfriend. And so I was like, let's do this together. And our strategy was like, we didn't want to be in the largest boat because that was more surface area to hit. And we also didn't want to be in the smallest boat because the minute you hit one person, like, then you hit the other, you're out. So we just got in a three-person boat because I was in the middle. And so he had gotten to the three-person boat and eventually was full. And I remember requesting this girl. I was like, hey, like, he and I wanted to be in the same boat together. Do you think we could switch? And so we swapped. But the boat that she went in was the boat that survived. <laughs> so if I had not interfered with destiny and fate, I probably would have made it to the next game. But you know what? It's all good. It's all good, I promise. I was eliminated at the right time, to be honest, just because I watched the show and I feel like I would have been so lonely in there because all my friends were gone, my alliance was gone, there was nothing that was a part of my storyline anymore, so I would have just been a background character even if I made it far. So unfortunately, I got eliminated by a game of randomness and luck. Like, I mean, there could be a little strategy, but at the end of the day, it really is a guessing game. So there was no way of knowing what boats to stand in or where to place the boats. You just had to sit there and pray, and you know what? It's not my fault, okay? I tried. If I was captain, what I would have done is I would have left the four boats at the starting position and not touched them. I don't know. I feel like that would have been cunty, no? Now, if it was a game of skill and talent and brains, bitch, you know I would have aimed that shit up because I slayed Red Light, Green Light. I slayed Dalgona. Bitch, they should have had a game where I did my eyebrows. <laughs> So it was unfortunate that my time was cut short, but I will say I got eliminated during the best time too just because I was able to explore London with the people that got eliminated and they were all my friends. And so it was such an experience. And again, this was before my solo travel era. And so it really just empowered me to like, wow, take life by the horns and own it. Now that the show is out, I can kind of see why some of my parts weren't aired because I was so silly. I did not take things seriously at all. I am a very mentally headstrong person, and so I was really a tough cookie to break. And I think they were going for people who were more vulnerable, emotional, dramatic, but I was just like, period, yes, bitch. But you know what, it's okay. There are bigger and better things out there for me that truly deserve my essence and energy. All in all, it was such a once in a lifetime experience because I had heard over 100,000 people applied and only 456 people got selected. And so the fact that I went out of my way and did the whole auditioning process like everybody else did, um, and got selected. I'm very proud of myself. And so I think for me, I'm always about stepping outside of my comfort zone and growing as a person. And this opportunity definitely reassured that I'm that bitch. Because of Squid Game, I was able to have the confidence to do my first international solo trip to Japan. Because of Squid Game, I also ended up taking acting classes because I loved being on set and I wanted to be a role model in representation. So I stepped outside of my comfort zone in a different way too by taking acting classes. So I feel like even though I didn't win, even though I didn't get major screen time, I was able to gain a lot personally um, and it really fulfilled me in numerous ways whether it be interpersonally with friendships or personally with my goals and my mindset and perspective in life I feel like I have no regrets on how I navigated my time um, because I was truthful and genuine to myself I also really thought about you know the flawless fam and my brand and how I didn't want to you know act out of character and tarnish my reputation just for a screen time or something, you know? I think for me, it's just taking this opportunity and making the most out of it. I'm having so much fun in my Squid Game era right now. I know how so many of you have been following me since my OG Kevin days, or even my K-pop era, beauty era, homophobes era, and now solo travel era. And it just goes to show that, you know, life is what you make of it, okay? Like, I've lived so many different lives at this point. Um, and so for me, this is just a side quest in my career. Hopefully I get to have another opportunity where I'm able to actually share my story and my presence in a bigger platform. Um, but until then, like, I feel like I'm doing a great job on my own, which I, that makes me feel really good. I hope I made you proud. I hope I made my mom proud. I know she's looking down and just like thinking, wow, this bitch crazy, but I did it and I'm, I'm really proud of myself. 
Let me know if you've seen the show and if you've seen me in my brief cameo appearance, okay? Take a picture of me. I'm so happy and grateful that you're all here along for the ride. I'm going to enjoy it for as long as I can because I know that this is gonna go away so fast. Um, but until the next journey, I love you all so much. And remember everyone, to be flawless is to be yourself. <gasps> Bye!